So um, why are you here in Washington? I'm not here on a 10 day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just to get that out of, out of the way. Um, well, uh, Sashi Brown is a, is a, a great family friend and um, he asked uh, myself and my wife to come in and talk to you guys about, um, about diet, you know, longevity, uh, taking care of themselves. Uh, and, you know, I jumped at the opportunity. Uh, I believe uh, everything that I've learned in my career, uh, everything that, that sustained me for 18 seasons, you know, it's important to pass that along. And, you know, so many uh, of the young guys, you know, you're, you're looking for a position in this league. You're trying to figure out how to, how to grow and become an all-star, you know, make more money. And it's small things, you know, and it's, it's the simple things I think often we, we complicate. And I'm trying, I, I tried to expound on them the things that, you know, keeping it simple, uh, they, they, they know what they are, but understanding their lives through how I lived my life, how I played uh, the game for 18 seasons, to get them understanding of how I was able to be successful. You said you're a, a good friend <clears throat> of Sashi Browns. Mm -hmm. um, so you probably know him a lot better than, than we do and people in the NBA do. What can mm -hmm. you say about him and, and now making the move from the NFL to the NBA? Well, he's, he's a guy who's um, he's very particular. Uh, he's very thorough. Um, he's he grew up a huge sports fan, uh, not just of football, you know, but basketball, baseball, um, and he he has a, a constant quest for knowledge and for information. And um, you know, just you know, just as recent as as, as Cleveland, what he did uh, to help them uh, at least be in position you know, to acquire what they've acquired, uh, to put them in position to get, get, to get good talent in the rosters. Uh, he was at the, at the helm of that. So, you know, what, what uh, the Wizards are doing here, you can see uh, the changes they're trying to implement, uh, creating a culture here that exists, you know, in their young players uh, to, to create sustainability over a long period of time. That's so important because when you look around professional sports, uh, you see some teams that just can't win. And ultimately, you know, as shameful as it is, it's ownership. It's, it's how you run your franchises. And, you know, you can see uh, the protocols being put in place as I spent the day here uh, on things that they, they want to change, the, the efficiencies they want to put in place to make sure that their players are, are smarter, uh, they're eating better, they're getting rest. Uh, ultimately, that does translate into them being healthier, stronger, and, and ultimately translating their wins. How, how different? Is, is just the lead now from when you first came in, specifically from a health standpoint, just with the, the health analytics and the way that everybody has a dietitian or, or whatever it is. Does any part of you kind of wish, like, man, I, I wish I had that when I was hmm. 20? I, I walked into the, uh, I don't know what to call that, the, the, the cafeteria, the food room. Um, I, I always talk about the segments of uh, growth that we had. First, when I got into the league, it was travel. Most teams flew commercial, meaning, Players were on the planes with other other, you know, people, uh, and then we went started going commercial or private, uh, charter, and then it was strength and conditioning, you know, in the next five six year segment, uh, where weight rooms were being added uh, to facilities and uh, strength coaches were hired, and then the last segment uh, was uh, was eating, you know, making sure that there was food available. Uh, a lot, you know, a few guys here and there had chefs, uh, but now having food access uh, accessible to the player in the morning, you think it can only imagine how many times you see guys wake up in the morning, you know, not having a, eaten uh, before practice. So think about the lack of productivity uh, that you have there. So making sure that these guys have food available, like one, you'll have more players that hang around uh, the the facilities uh, before and after practices. You know, this should be a place where guys want to be, want to hang, you know, it promotes more shooting, it promotes more unity and, and cohesiveness by guys talking and sitting down eating. And, you know, just the things that we do going out to the community, always trying to find a place to eat, you know, it, it, it's more difficult, you know, but certainly uh, more conducive to, you know, having that available to you at your fingertips here in the facilities and allowing them to get better. What's been your impression of Rui Hachimura so far? Well, I haven't spent much time with him, and I probably will in a little bit, but uh, just, you know, following him over the last year, watching him, 
you know, he, he certainly is, is a player. You know, you look at a player's, um, you know, adaptability to, to play at a higher level. He's certainly got the size. He seems like he has a great personality. Um, and, you know, he can play at, at a high level. So um, I, I believe that he's in a position to be highly successful. And um, I think it'll be great. I spent, I was in Japan a couple of months ago. And uh, the game is growing even uh, more over in Japan. So whenever uh, a foreign-born player uh, is successful in the league, it, it increases, you know, the, the the NBA brand in that country uh, and certainly globally. So we always root for uh, the players because it certainly is a global game and it makes it even more global. Um, and it brings in other countries around in, in those those vicinities in those Asian regions as well. What's the What's, What's the secret the, uh, to being a good three-point shooter? Uh, practicing mm -hmm. perfect practice. Uh, so just understand, you know, shooting a three, you can't come in here and shoot a, a three as if you're practicing and everybody's here. You got to shoot a three as if you're playing. It's the championship and you're, you got one shot and you have the tallest player on the floor running out on you. That's how you have to practice every day. Thanks, Ryan. Let's, uh, Could we just... Thank you. Thank you. Just one. Just, thank you.